Get faster internet speeds for free when you get TV, internet, and phone. Ask for Trio from Rev. Rev. Join the revolution. Coming up in news tonight, Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner calls for an investigation into the National Insurance Board. Plus, some unemployed Bahamians explain what it's like to walk a day in their shoes. That story coming up. A top PLP weighs in on the turmoil within the FNM. That story straight ahead. Welcome to Our News, I'm Dana Smith, thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner is calling on Prime Minister Perry Christie to take immediate action and launch an inquiry into what exactly is going on at the National Insurance Board. This after former NIB Director and CEO Rowena Bethel painted a frank picture of infighting and divisions within the board. Something is fishy at National Insurance and we need to find out what is actually happening. It smells. Bethel said NIB is a deeply divided organization with a myriad of issues, which led to many inefficiencies. The latest being the launch of its new V3 software for insurance administration. As a result, the public can expect delays in payments for short-term benefits. Bethel, whose contract at the board was not renewed when it ended two days ago, said problems associated with implementing the system stem from infighting at the very top of NIB. Butler Turner says Bahamians deserve answers. Unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. We need an, an accounting, a very clear accounting. I am going to call today on behalf of the people of the Bahamas, on the Prime Minister, to ensure that immediate action is brought to bring an inquiry with regards to what is truly going on at National Insurance. Butler Turner said some very hard-hitting questions need to be asked about the abrupt exit of Bethel. It is also reprehensible and unacceptable, Butler Turner said, that NIB is having issues processing checks as scores of Bahamians depend on those funds. The question also needs to be asked about the nepotism, the cronyism, the friends, family and lovers that is allegedly creating a lot of challenges at the one resource in our country that is supposed to be there to take care of the retired persons, to take care of underprivileged persons, to take care of disabled persons. I have some very real concerns and questions with regards to what is really taking place at National Insurance. Butler Turner said ultimately the issues at NIB fall right at the feet of Prime Minister Perry Christie and Minister with Responsibility for NIB Shane Gibson. She said this administration is deluded and it's time to come clean. The Prime Minister no less and the Minister with Responsibility need to come to the Bahamian people and stop selling dreams and stories because there is a grave issue taking, taking place, I suggest, at National Insurance. According to Butler Turner, a report was done in 2013 outlining the list of precautions and procedures that need to be undertaken by NIB. She questioned why that report hasn't been released, noting the situation there is a matter of national importance. Well, despite the government's continued promises to cut unemployment in the country and help Bahamians to escape poverty, some unemployed residents say they are tired of those broken promises, adding that the government should keep its word by providing more employment opportunities because the livelihood of the nation is at stake. Simone Davis reports. This mother said life has been rough for her and her family for the past nine years. Though she claims that she has been actively searching for employment for nearly a decade, the Sunlight Village resident told our news it has been a struggle. Being dependent on my mom and the kids' daddy, you know, he do so much, you know, but basically it's hard, rough. It's still not enough. No, no, and it's six of us living inside here yeah, and... Everyone unemployed. Over on Augusta Street, Michael Williams said he returned home after years of living and working in the United States because he missed the Bahamas. However, he said he returned only to find very few employment opportunities. He said he believes unemployment is the root of the country's social issues. I'm a little bit too overqualified for the jobs them now around in the Bahamas. I was a... Uh, uh, 
professional semi-truck driver in the United States. I moved back home because I wanted to be home. And I find that all the positions in them are loaded. Job creation was a major campaign promise of the PLP in the lead up to the 2012 general election. However, the issue of unemployment was highlighted last week after international credit ratings agency Moody's put the Bahamas on notice that it would likely downgrade the country's sovereign credit rating. Some people like Henry Gibson are losing faith. Gibson, who's been unemployed for four years, says he has learned to cope with the little he has. Well, I've been seeking employment in numerous different places, but all they've been doing is turning me around and around. But thank God I kind of a little multi-ambitious because I get a little mechanic trade. So um, every now and then I can have a car to service and that has put a little money in my pocket. But in spite of that, I get um, um, a social service uh, card. And so every month I rely on my grocery what I get from them. Prime Minister Perry Christie recently announced that the government has allocated $22 million in the 2016-2017 budget to establish an apprenticeship and training program that will target young unemployed Bahamians. Those unemployed Bahamians also said they don't believe the government fully understands the real impact of unemployment in the country. Well, the set who get the high hopes for, depending on the government, I then lost all faith in the government, even most of the government entities. Reporting for our news, I'm Simone Davis. Free National Movement Deputy Leader Peter Turnquist has dismissed assertions that support is growing for opponents Loretta Butler-Turner and Dr. Dwayne Sands, insisting the media and political observers have underestimated the level of support in the country for party leader Dr. Hubert Minnis. Turnquist was responding to former Deputy Prime Minister Brent Simonet, who said polls conducted by FNMs show party members and the public prefer Butler-Turner over Dr. Minnis. Dr. Minnis and I and our team have been on the ground um, that we are um, actively canvassing our, our, our delegates, our support, uh, and the feedback that we are receiving is very positive. Um, it is amazing to see um, the reaction that people have uh, to Dr. Minnis, which is very much contrary to what you hear. Uh, in the media, you hear from certain sectors uh, of our party. Both Simonet and FNM MP Richard Lightbourne have come out in support of Butler and Sands, who will face off against Minnis and Turnquest for the top two posts during this month's convention. However, Turnquest suggested the country is in need of strong leadership and a clear plan to face the current financial crisis. We uh, are faced with uh, a situation where we need clear, calm heads, uh, that understands uh, the the uh, financial pressures that are that are on us. Well, Minnis and Butler Turner are both launching their campaigns tomorrow night at around the same time. Butler Turner had announced the date of her launch last Wednesday, and this morning, Minnis announced he's also decided to launch his campaign tomorrow. Well, asked about this, Butler Turner said she makes nothing of it and believes a little competition isn't a bad thing. I have no issue. Competition is always good. And at the end of the day, whether I win or whether I do not win, I will still stand firm with my party, the Free National Movement. According to Butler Turner's Facebook page, the launch is set to take place at 7 p.m. in Rawson Square. Menace's event will take place at 7.30 p.m. at Christie Park on Nassau Street. The overlapping time slots for the campaign launches have raised eyebrows among some, but Minnis insisted that the plans for the launch of his campaign have been in the works for some time. I think people need to determine whether or not they are going to come and hear a new message or whether they're going to go and listen to the same old message that we've been hearing for the last four years. And so I invite people to come and see what we truly offer. Butler Turner said although she may not have won at the last convention, she's transformed since then and learned many lessons. Well, the ongoing turmoil within the Free National Movement has left the party in shambles. That's according to the Progressive Liberal Party's MP for Mike Calvi, Alfred Gray, who insisted it will take more than a mere convention to unify the FNM. Jasmine Brown has the details in this report. Gray says no matter the outcome, he believes the FNM will remain a fracture party. They seem to be in shambles. And I call them, as they say in Junkanoo, a scrap gang. 
Gray says he highly doubts anything can fix the FNM at this point. He adds that those who are holding out hope that the FNM's upcoming convention will solve the party's issues are asking for a miracle. No matter how this go, the FNM is going to be a scrap gang. Because unless the six dissidents switch their position if Minnis wins and say, oh, we now have confidence in him. You think people are going to believe that story? Menace himself will have no confidence in those six. So no matter how this turns out, the FNM is fractured permanently. And while he says the PLP is not perfect, he claims the FNM in its current state is not putting up much of a fight. I don't know. It's just confusing. And, and, and I think that's what makes uh, the FNM so weak as a potential government. The party's convention was pushed up from November following reports of an ultimatum by six FNM MPs who threatened to write a letter to the Governor General and have Dr. Hubert Minnis ousted as opposition leader. When asked if any of the dissenting six would be welcomed into the PLP if they decided to leave the FNM, Gray said this. The PLP's tent is big. We don't expect that they will join us because that will be a miracle. Um, they are too far gone on the other side of the fence to, to look back, and we don't expect that they will look back, but if they do, open arms will be for them. Uh, but we, we don't think about things like that. We have, a, we have a very strong party. We have a very strong base. Gray says no matter the outcome, the PLP is ready to take on the FNM in the next general election. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Still to come, police investigating the discovery of a body in Grand Bahama. Stay tuned.